I paid £33.77 for this broken Xbox One S off eBay. The listing says that it was bought as part of a larger job lot, but I don't know how much of that to believe because most listings say the same. So if you don't know me, my name is Dakota and I fix electronics on a component level. I also teach people how to do it on YouTube. So if that's the kind of thing you're into, then be sure to get subscribed and turn on the bell notifications. And if you do want to support me, you can do so by checking out the links in the video description. I've got a Patreon page which you can support me on. I've got a Twitch page which you can become a Twitch Prime subscriber. And I've also got some affiliate links in the video description. So with that being said, let's get into today's video. This video probably still would have been here without today's sponsor. But hey, it's time to show something, right? So here goes. Here at The Coder Productions, we love nothing more than to take as much money from you, the viewer, as we possibly can. Which is why we're proud to talk to you about ConsoleFix.shop. A great place for you to spend your hard-earned cash. I mean, yeah, fair enough. You get parts and supplies that help you fix things, but you've got to give me some money in return. Nothing in life's free, and if you pay me for it, you might appreciate it more. Or not, hey, I'm not judging. With that being said, we do have some pretty cool stuff on the shelves, including power supplies, HDMI ports, charging chips, MOSFETs, and whatever else you can think of that'll give you the illusion that you're getting a good deal. So head on over to the online store by clicking on the link in the video description, and if there's one thing I can guarantee, is that there will be a way for me to take your money. Console Fix, your friendly money-grabbing YouTuber. Right, so as you can see here, I bought this for £33.77 off eBay, and that was on auction. And it does say Xbox One S console 500 gig, faulty spares of repairs, blah, blah, blah. This item is faulty and is sold as seen. It was bought as part of a faulty job lot and has not been tested further. We don't know what's wrong with it. It might not be the exact console shown that you receive. That was a bit strange. I wasn't really sure what the deal was with that, but for £33, it's really not bad at all. If I just click on the list in here and just take a look at the photos, uh, it looks like they've just got a standard photo on here, but I bought this thinking that it had been opened. But if we take a look at the actual console, this one looks like it's never been touched. So that's a bonus, I guess. But yeah, I did find it a bit strange how he says that it was bought as part of a larger job lot. I don't generally tend to believe them, but never mind. Let's just see what is actually going on with it. So I'm going to try pairing it on. Okay, it turns on. That's uh, it's a good start, I suppose. Well, it's actually not because it would uh, it would make for a pretty boring video. Did we get a free game? No, damn it. Right, so the first thing I'm going to do is just test the HDMI. I've got this little HDMI tester here. You can buy these on my online store. I've done a deal with CMI Zapper, who also sells these USB testers. And basically, these will just be allow me to rapidly check and see if things are working. So we'll try the USB tester first. I'll leave a link to this in the video description, as well as these. They are back in stock on my online store now, so you can buy those. Okay, we've got communication between the USB and the CPU, that's good. Let's just have a look at display, just see if we get communication with that, without my big head getting in the way. And yeah, apparently we've got all data lines active, um, EDID is active, 5 volts active, um, hot plug detect is active. Yeah, but apparently that's working, strange. Well, let's just have a look. So I'm going to plug in a HDMI, I'll connect it up to the capture card just to see. Okay, that's a bit strange, we've got no signal, but yet apparently it works. Hmm. I'm just going to leave this for a minute and just see if it turns off on me. Because that's a bit odd. Okay, it's not turning off, but the display isn't coming up, so I'm just wondering if it's my capture card, because that HDMI tester is saying that everything's fine. And I've never had an issue with it before. He's never lied to me before. So let's just try it on the TV itself. Yeah, no signal. And it's on the right input source. That's a weird one because it's actually showing up that the HDMI circuit is fine, which is quite confusing. Hmm. Let me just check that again on the tester. Huh. Every single one is showing up as, as working. So this is a strange one. If it's got all of the signals it needs for the display, but it's not actually displaying. 
yeah, that's a very odd, a very odd issue. All right, so I'm going to get this apart then. Like I said, it looks like it's never been taken apart before. But I think what I'm going to do, first of all, is just try the hard drive because it could very well be a hard drive issue, especially if it's showing up that it's actually got a signal for the HDMI. And that's a one terabyte, not a 500. That's nice. Worth a little bit more. Not much more, but it's worth a little bit more. So I've got this 500 gig SSD which I can use for testing. I wouldn't leave I wouldn't leave the SSD in there because I don't really benefit from it, but I can use it for testing. So before you go doing any micro soldering or anything like that, just test the hard drive first if you've got no display. It is a very common cause, and these consoles, especially this one, that appears as though it's never been opened, the car, the hard drive is probably, if not dead, it's going to be close, I would say. So I'll just pop that there. Pop the pedal back in. Get the little fanny spinny thing. And uh, no, nope, it doesn't look like it's turning on. Or rather, it doesn't look like it's displaying even with a replacement hard drive. So that is very, very odd how it's not displaying. Just in case, I'm gonna try it on the TV again. Nope, still not displaying. So that is very weird how the HDMI tester is, uh, well, apparently working. It's showing up that it's got all of the signals there and it needs those signals to light up. Like I said, I have tested that HDMI tester on a Xbox Series X that was having display issues. So it's sending all of the signals, it's sending the data lines and it's sending the power and the other signal lines to actually tell the TV to turn on. Could it just be the port or could it be something like the HDMI chip? I'm not sure, but we'll find out, I'm sure. That is very, very, very weird. Never come across that before where it's showing up as fine on the tester and then it's not working on the actual TV. Kind of a bad advertisement for me to sell them, isn't it? Well, I promise you, it does work. <laughs> it does work. Right, so I'm going to pop all of the parts to one side. I'll worry about cleaning it later on. There we go. Yeah, this has definitely never been opened. All right, let's get this heat sink off. You can also buy these X clamp tools off my online store as well, by the way. Cheaper than you'll find them on eBay. Link in the description. This one's brand new, so it's nice and tight. Okay, pop the heatsink to one side. I'm looking at the port, and the port seems mint condition, so I don't think it's going to be that. Let's just take a look under the microscope and see if we can see anything. All right, so the circuit itself looks fine. I'm not seeing any signs of any rework. Doesn't look like the port's ever been changed. So I'm really not sure here. Just take a look at the actual port, and that, again, looks pretty pristine, to be honest. So that's the HDMI output port, that's the HDMI input port. Interestingly, the input port looks worse than the output port. I mean, even that's fine. You know, it's just a little bit of a scuff on the outside of it, but... Yeah, the input port looks worse than the output port. So I think what I'm going to do then is just change this chip. So this here is, well, this one is the SN75DP159. It's a HDMI encoder, but when I replace these, I always replace it with the TDP158, which again, you can buy on my store. This is just one big advertisement, I swear. But you can, <laughs> I'll replace it with the 158 because number one, they're cheaper, and number two, they are better uh, because they are the, uh, the newer, newer revision to the 159 and also they're easier to get. All right, so I've got my hot air set at 440 degrees Celsius, 40% airflow. The reason I'm going straight for this chip is just because, well, to be honest, it's 99% gonna be the cause. Although there is a transistor there which doesn't look great, but when I look at it on an angle, it looks fine. I doubt it's going to be that.
So I'll remove the 159. And I've got some brand new genuine 158. So when you're putting the 159 on, or rather when you're replacing the 159 with the 158, it still goes on with pin one in the same direction. Like I said, these are a direct replacement for the 159s. So it still goes on with pin number one in the same place. It's just a different chip, but it is better than the original. Bye bye. Well, this one's not better than the original because this one decided to fly off. So I'm going to partially flow that down. Then if I add a bit of flux, I'm getting a little bit of flickering on my microscope there, just like that. There we go, perfect. Absolutely perfect. I shouldn't even need to touch those pins up or anything. So I'm going to switch back to the overhead cam because for some reason the microscope keeps flickering. I'm really not sure why, but I'm going to have to spend some time and figure it out, I think. It's something to do with the capture card, I'm sure of it. Because it happens when I turn my uh, hacker on and off as well. It's very weird. But then again, that happens on all of the capture cards. But they are all on the same card, so I'm really not sure. So I'm just cleaning this up. Just get rid of this flux. I'm going to be careful because I've got a blister on my hand from assembling a trampoline for my kids the other day, so I don't want to get OPA on it. No, thank you. There we go. Okay, so that's nice and clean. I'll just give it a little bit of a scrub with a toothbrush as well. There we go. Um, then I'm going to clean... Ow! I've got it on my finger. Ow! Well, my hand. That hurt. Oh, wow. That really did hurt. I need to put a glove on because that is painful. <laughs> oh, wow. That was real pain. <laughs> Don't laugh at the gloves. My gloves are cool, all right? I'm just getting rid of this thermal paste. So I'm just gonna give this a little bit of a, a proper cleaning, just to get rid of some of this excess thermal paste. That thermal paste actually is still kind of, kind of loose and damp. So that's quite interesting. This is probably a 2018 model. Uh, I'll have a look on the, uh, on the housing. It's not really badly dried up though. They did use, I think, a different thermal paste in 2018 when they was uh, assembling some of the last consoles. And uh, yeah, it seemed a lot better than the original stuff they used to use. By the way, I'm not putting any pressure on the APU with the tweezers. I'm just giving it a really light scrape to break up the thermal paste. It's perfectly fine if you don't put any pressure on it, but you don't want to be scratching that APU. It will cause all sorts of trouble. Right, there we go. That's good enough for me. I'll put some fresh MX4 on it. So I always do this when I service a console anyway, or when I'm selling a console. So if I buy this, you know, if I buy a console to sell, I'm always going to put fresh thermal paste on. But look at how easy that thermal paste is actually coming off. It's a lot easier than it normally is. But I still don't think that this has ever been opened. Yeah, that is definitely, definitely... Well, I would say a 2018 model. I'm just going to give this a little bit of a brush down, get rid of the dust from there. And there we go, nice and clean. That'll do. Uh, that's a bit stiff, by the way. You can use these for reassembly as well. If you just pop it in, pull upwards and push down, you can clip it back on. Cold tip, that is. Okay, anyway, let's uh, let's reassemble this enough for testing. I'm not going to put it back in the housing because I might need to do other stuff to it. So it's not really worth putting it back in the housing. Actually, you know what? I'm going to pop that with the test hard drive because I know this works. So I'll use the test hard drive for now. Um, while I'm there, I might as well clean out this um, power supply. Just around the edges. I don't generally go inside these to clean them. I'm just cleaning around the edges because it's not really worth me giving an electric shock just for the sake of cleaning a little bit of dust inside. It'll all blow out now that the fans have been unblocked anyway. And disk drive, 
clean as you go. There's no point in leaving the dust. If you're going to be inside the console, just clean it. I'm sick of seeing um, consoles that go elsewhere. They have work done, like let's say, for example, the HDMI port. And I get it for another job, and it's not been cleaned out, and it's never been cleaned out. Like if you're going to be inside the console, and you're working on these for customers, just clean the damn thing. It takes a couple of minutes. There's no harm in cleaning it. I do know a few companies who actually charge extra just to clean it. I'm not going to mention names. I'm not here for that. But I think it's a scummy thing to do if you're inside the console anyway. If you if you get sent in for a service, then yeah, charge. But if uh, if you're already inside, then where's the harm? Where's the bother? Right, let's have a look at this, shall we? Okay, still turns on. Good, we haven't broken anything. Let's pop over to the ugly cam. And we'll see if it displays. Look at that, it's light out. <laughs> it is 4.48am. There we go. It's working. It's working. All right, shut it down. Uh, it's come up in safe mode because the firmware isn't on the hard drive. But that's fine. I'm going to put it back with the original hard drive and load it up using that. And then I'll load it up on the capture card instead. But yes, it literally was dark when I started this, and now it's light. Boom, there we go. So that's going to load up into the actual dashboard now, or at least it should, as long as the hard drive's good, which, to be honest, it looks like it's absolutely fine. There we go. Boom. That's what I'm talking about. Seems to be working. I'm just going to sync up a controller. And yep, wireless controller works. I'm going to pop in a disc. This is one that I got out of a console the other day, Cricket 19. That's what we should see load up. And yep, there we go. That's working. So I'm going to just run through a couple of tests, a couple of my normal tests. So I'll connect to the internet. It picks up my Wi Fi. There we go. And now he's going to want an update. Of course it is. All right, well, I'm going to need to update it anyway, so I may as well let that run through because I'm going to need to make sure it's not banned online. So I may as well just let the update run through now and then be done with it. 700 meg, that's not too bad. Let's run through it. So it looks like everything seems to be working fine, even though it did take a little bit longer than I'm used to, because I'm used to working with the Series X these days. He's going to ask me for the password, isn't he? I'm going to have to skip signing. Oh dear. Well, I'll have to connect to my own Xbox, I guess. Or my own Xbox account. Okay, there we go. So, I've just added my own account to it. And it does look like it's not banned online, which is absolutely perfect. It also looks like Cricket 19 is working, which is the test game. There we go. So, one thing I did do while I was waiting for the update to install was check the date of manufacturer. And it does actually say on the uh, console 2018. So, I was right there in thinking that the thermal paste really wasn't technically that old. So, the date on this is the 19th of the 8th, 2018. So, it's one of the later revisions. But that doesn't really make a difference other than, obviously, the thermal paste being a bit fresher. But it's got fresh thermal paste on it now anyway. This will get put back together and then I can reset it. Really not going to make a lot on these. They don't sell for much these days. But at the same time, it's content for me. And that's what I enjoy doing more than anything. So I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, don't forget to give me a thumbs up in the video description and leave a comment down in the comment section down below. It all helps the YouTube al algorithm, helps to push the content to new viewers and helps to grow the channel. And I really do genuinely appreciate it. If you do want to support me, like I said, there's some links in the video description. You can find out how in the description. And if you do really want to support me, the best way to do that is just to watch another video. Genuinely, YouTube loves it when you stay online and watch another video after you've watched one already. So I'm going to pop one up on the screen now. I'm not sure which one yet. I'll find one, but I'm sure it'll be a banger. So with that being said, thank you very much for watching. And until next time, I'll see you later. Bye for now.